Texas Western in the home whites. In the reds for New Mexico State. Our officials, Antonio Perry, Darren George, and Chance Moore. And we're set to go here in El Paso, Texas. Here we go. Like the Aggies are wearing some throwbacks as well. So we're going through history. We talked about the 200 plus games these teams have played. The uniforms are representative of that. Mario McKinney with the basketball. It's his first start of the season. Donnie Tillman, the forward, takes a seat on the bench. Maybe a little bit more help in the backcourt. And this is what UTEP likes to do, extend the defense. They force 20 turnovers a game, and so many come in the half court. Big man down low, it's two for Johnny McCants. Great pass, great catch, and a terrific finish. And that's what you have to do when a team is overplaying you and extending their defense. You have to try to beat them back door and beat them over the top of the defense. At that time, they were able to do it. It's Sule Boom, who's right at the free throw line, little floater, and Sule Boom is on the board for the first time since he played last on November 19th against Pacific. You love that if you're a, can we call him Texas Western? If you're a UTEP fan. That's a lot of contact with Jabari Rice going to the free throw line. We talked about Rice in the open playing the point. They've changed the lineup a little bit to take the ball out of his hands at least as far as having to create for others and now he can kind of just create for himself that was on Keontae Kennedy Jabari Rice a 76 percent free throw shooter and on Tuesday in the 101 94 loss to New Mexico he was nine for 11 from the free throw line these teams New Mexico and New Mexico State to take a look at Chris Jans. And Chris Jans was watching the game from home until he couldn't anymore because there was a power outage. A lot of things going on. All there, sorts of things going on. Oh. So he didn't, he couldn't see the game. He actually had to listen to the game on the radio. Jack Nixon, who's sitting next to us, he, he had to call the game on his phone. Oh. But either way, those two teams combined to shoot 70, 82 free throws. So Jack called the game on that flip phone he showed us? <laughs> wow. Talk about throwback. <laughs> That's for sure. The enemy. Teddy Allen goes in for the rebound, but it's a loose ball picked up, and Jamari Sibley will go to the free throw line on that second chance opportunity. It seemed like everybody on New Mexico State thought the other guy was going to rebound. They all left, literally leaving the basketball loose here. And the loose change picked up nicely. Couldn't divert. Sibley will go to the line for a couple. Freshman. Coming off a career high 13, 7, and two blocks. In their win on Wednesday against Florida AM. They last played nine days ago. He transferred in from. Georgetown, an Oak Hill product. Steve Smith. Top high school programs in the country. Joe Golding in his first year after those 11 very successful years at Abilene Christian. Nice back door. Finish. Teddy Allen can't finish. Whoa. Loose ball. That's going to be. Stay. Will be New Mexico State basketball. They'll get a refresh of 20 seconds on the shot clock. You have to be aware of that if you're the guards. If, if, see, if on the replay here, you see that ball touch so late, boom. Great play. Great effort. Teddy Allen leaves it up for Will McNair Jr. McNair up at the right hand, a bit too strong. Simply gets up for the rebound, and UTEP will push. Number four, McKinney in red is the one that they kind of put into the starting lineup to play point guard. Good cut, great feed. Verhoeven finds Jamal Bienemy. Bienemy had missed that three and then followed it up by getting into some open space oh, and he them. picked the pocket, oh. but he's whistled for the foul. I thought that might be clean, but at the other end, Bienemy short on the, on the, 
three-pointer, but he keeps moving, and Titus Verhoeven was able to deliver at the basket. Chance may have gotten away with one there. Crowd wanted to travel. Gives it up into the corner to McKinney. Nowhere to go. Five on the shot clock. Going to have to put it up. Rice, fancy move. Leaves it off for McNair, who finishes as time expires. Will McNair from Philadelphia. Martin Luther King High School down the street from where I grew up on 18th and Stitton Avenue. A homeboy. Deontay Kennedy, a little fade at the free throw line. No, that will be UTEP basketball. So, so far, no turnovers for either team taking care of the basketball. And if you're a McKinney, number four in red, you want to make sure that stays because, you know, you're, this is kind of an audition for him. First start playing the point guard. They're kind of looking for who's going to lead them from that position. Again, Rice was kind of playing point number 10. But he's more of a scoring guard. Christian Agnew wearing number two is into the game for the first time. As Sule boom misses. Oh, lost it again. They've had trouble, the Aggies. Deontay Kennedy got it back and well off on the three. A lot of contact and finally a whistle. That was some nifty dribbling, though. It's a foul, on, foul on Alfred Hollins, who's entered the game for the first time off the bench. Mike Peake getting set to check in for New Mexico State as is Kevin Kalu for UTEP. So now see McCants comes out. Okay, Rice is coming out too, I think. No, they're just moving him down. A lot of shuffling there. It's like a hockey game substitution. Well, we sorted it out. McKinney. Nice dive. Oh, good defense. And it ripped away. Collins leaves it off for a three. Agnew well off the mark. Ooh. McKinney went down hard. I'm having trouble getting up as well. Kevin Kalu is whistled for the foul. I mentioned that New Mexico State, New Mexico game on Tuesday. New Mexico winning 101-94. See McKinney hitting the deck pretty hard. Mexico State committed 29 fouls, and they were fouled 22 times. That game, plus the delay. Plus the 50-minute power outage. They must have been in there for seven hours. <laughs> Mc, McNair, a little turnaround, around and out. Allen picks it up and lays it back in. It seems like McNair is going to get that shot all night if he wants it. He can, as long as you feed the post and throw it over the top of the defense, he'll have his opportunities inside. Boom, an off-balance three, and you could see it. A quick skying for that rebound, McKinney. Really not a lot of offense being run right now by Utah. Teddy Allen for three, and he has struggled from deep, but he's off to a good start here. Just three for nine on Tuesday against New Mexico, but he is a 37% three-point shooter. Yeah, which isn't bad, and he's knocked down his 21st three. As again, we talked about, he will put it up. He takes a lot of shots, but he'll make a lot of shots. UTEP off to a two for eight start. They've struggled. Rice inside the three-point line, no. A loose ball, it's gonna be out of bounds off of Mike Peak. And we've got our first timeout with 14.57 to go. Here in the first half, New Mexico State, a six-point lead on the road. A 7-0 run for the Aggies makes it an 11-5 lead. 14.57 to go in the first half. Fans, it's time to vote for the fan base, the most spirited fan base. So use your phones. There's that QR code. It takes you to the Flow Code website, and that's where you can vote. So you vote for the most spirited fan base. Not obviously the spirited fan base in the building, but wherever you're watching, you can vote for the most spirited fan base, New Mexico State or UTEP. Just use that QR code right there on your screen. New Mexico State's 
has held UTEP scoreless for the past 215. As UTEP is out to a two for eight shooting start. A lot of good history for both of these teams. Recently, though, New Mexico State has been one of the better mid-major teams in the country. Chris Jans has won an average of 23.8 games per year since he's been here in his fifth season. It's a lot of wins. Took over for Marvin Menvies, and that's going to stay with UTEP. One. Marvin Menvies had taken five teams in nine years to the NCAA tournament before going to UNLV, and then actually Paul Weir took over for the year before he went to New Mexico. Then Chris Jans continued that success. The struggles continue for UTEP now, the scoring jot over three minutes. Nate Fryer into the game for the first time, wearing three. Uat Alok has the basketball number five. Nice double. Two, as it ripped away. Didn't see that double coming. Exactly It'll right. Aggies. He, Alok didn't, didn't read the double team, and they came from his blind side and nearly turned it over. He thought he was one-on-one -on, -one on the island just as he's about to go to work. The enemy snuck in there, tried to steal it, couldn't, couldn't get it, but he did knock it away. Allen's got the ball with four on the shot clock. Tried to throw it up to A-Lock, and that is going to be a 30-second shot clock violation. It is interesting that's the second turnover now, so not a major deal. But I, I tell you, it's interesting that uh, UTEP forces almost 20 turnovers a game because they don't press. But man, is their half-court defense intense. They extend it. They're in your shorts, man, on the perimeter. Three on the way. It's well off. Alfred Hollins. Team is just one for their last nine. Rice got a man up in the air. Hands it off to A. Lock. Who oh, can't finish? Another opportunity. No. Got to dunk it. Point blank range. Couldn't convert. There's the enemy around a screen from Maring. Hollins again. And missed it in the same spot. Every shot from the perimeter has been long for UTEP. I don't know if they're jacked up for this game or they are throwing it up hard. They haven't played in nine days. They shoot just 31% from three. Rice oh, hit the passed. deck. I think he tried and then got caught in between. Mike Beat will go to the free throw line looking for a three-point play. Mike Peek picked up some loose change around the bucket himself. And he gets fouled. A great job just being in the right place at the right time because Rice was out of control, falling. But Peek, Johnny on the spot, buckets. It's going to be a foul on Maring. A 9-0 run in UTEP. That scoring drought has lasted 4 minutes and 44 seconds for Joe Golden. A 13-5 game. Yeah, UTEP has really gotten not many good looks at the basket here in the early part of this game. Running the dribble handoff series now to see if they can get the enemy coming to the to the hoop. Good take by the enemy, but nice job by McNair to stand in. Too long once again. Oh, Teddy Allen! Wow. Teddy Allen doesn't care if one guy, two guy, or even two guys, or even three guys are guarding him. He's getting to the cup. Three season WAC first team. The Western Athletic Conference for New Mexico State. They'll be joining Conference USA at some point over the next two years. A nice just beyond the elbow, and UTEP just can't get a bucket. Simply, finally, finally yes. snaps the scoring drought at five and a half minutes. That is a long drought, but they play solid defense enough that they're still not really out of the game at, in this early stage of it, just an eight-point deficit. Good extra pass to Peak. And they are getting what they want. 
those slips to the basket. The pass is on time, and if the defense collapses, they throw it out to a shooter on a perimeter. Really good stuff they're running, New Mexico State. I like the job that McNair just did on Verhoeven, making that pass that much more difficult. Yeah, he took Ted an angle. Teddy Allen, the only player in double figures every game this season for the Aggies. They rely. Joe Golding needs his team to get a bucket. Three for 14 in the early going. UTEP trailing 15-7. It's the 221st meeting, the Battle of I-10. 41.4 miles separating Las Cruces and El Paso. They played at least one game every year since 1923. There's only World War II and the pandemic last year that prevented these two teams from playing. New Mexico State actually did play two games in this building last year since as, they couldn't as play game. games yeah, as, as in New Mexico. And there's oh. Chris Jans, who is 6-1 in this rivalry, 4-1 and one on the road for the 52-year-old, the three-time WAC Coach of the Year. So here comes the full court pressure out of the timeout. They got some length on the perimeter to make it tough on you. It should fall back to a man's man. Trying to create oh. some easier buckets. A lot of contact there. And that was a block primarily because I think the secondary defender was in that circle. No, he got out of it. They still call the block. Oh, Evan Spill as well. Verhoeven. Verhoeven, I'm sorry. Titus Verhoeven. Strong take. Couldn't convert, but getting to the line is just as good as you can knock him down. Mario McKinney at the free throw line. He's now 6 for 11 on the season from the strike. All-state selection out of St. Louis. Spent his freshman year at Missouri, juked for a year in Illinois, and here he is at New Mexico State. The run is 12-2 over the past six minutes. Just one field goal in their last 10 for UTEP. They really haven't been close other than that putback by Sibley. Boom, they need it, they got it. Sule Boom. The first three of the evening for UTEP. That was a feathery touch. That's what they need. And that ignited his defensive energy too. Picked up full court. After all that, it's still just a six-point game. As UTEP has struggled offensively, New Mexico State 6 for 15, 40%. That's good half-court defense getting in that passing lane, creating deflections. And that's what they love to do, and they really want to ignite that fast break. They haven't really forced the turnovers, but you see Sole lowering the boom from downtown. Missed the last two games with COVID. He scored 23 in his first game of the season. It was against New Mexico State. He had broken a finger in October, so he didn't practice for the five weeks leading up to the season. That's then he played and got sweated. COVID. He's only practiced five times this year. McNair for three, no. Remarkable when you think about his his journey so far this season. It's been rough. I've been trying to see how many minutes Joe Golding can get out of him after not practicing much, having COVID. That first game of the season they played, he ended up playing 36 minutes. Verhoeven with two in the lane. Very nice, soft touch in the paint, but Verhoeven took his time and was able to get a nice bucket. Like the way UTEP has stayed with it here. Oh, here we go. Boom, into the passing lanes. That's a two, yep. and it's long, but they'll hustle down for the rebound. Keontae Kennedy. Wow. Giving man. simply that three. They really are. He was wide open, but reluctant. Four for seven from three this season. No double. Probably should have took that one. Got to get it up. Hot potato. An air ball. And you understand the unselfishness, Noah, but I feel like they passed up some really good looks to get not so good of a look at the very end of that shot clock. Here they come with the, the one, two, two. 
Full court trap. New Mexico State five and two. UTEP four and two on the season. This start of a four game, 12 day road trip for the Aggies. Avery. No, and that's going to be UTEP basketball as Teddy Allen will check back in and Marcellus Chichi Avery. The Aggies, the Aggies have won three straight Western Conference regular seasons and two conference tournaments in the last three years. So in the five years that Coach Jans has been here, they have really just had some really good years in the, in the WAC. I'm sure the WAC isn't sorry to see them leave for Conference USA. Boom. McNair. Oh, yep. Fouled him. Just a lot of moving pieces as Boom was trying to get to the basket there. Yeah, trying to navigate in traffic. He saw a seam. It closed not because of defense, but really because the defender was being driven <laughs> was off like, the block, right? Like Kevin Gallo was forcing yeah. him that way. Kyle would have been best served to stay where he was because he got in Boom's way, but nonetheless, Boom will go to the line. Campus Insiders, your place for the latest news and information in college football. Cam Smith, Michael Felder, Matt Fortuna give the insight on the landscape of every college football game every Wednesday, 6 Eastern Stadium. Welcome to the game. So now this is full court man to man. Conference Championship Saturday coming up in college football tomorrow. Conference USA Championship this evening in San Antonio. McKinney dumps it off. Oh. Good feed. Excellent flush. Johnny McCants. McKinney, very unselfish. Dribble penetration, but he is looking to find friends. And he found a friend indeed in McCants. Good job by McKinney there to cut off the back door of Christian Agnew. Agnew will pull up for three. It's his first game after missing two games in COVID protocols. Allen McNair. Rice cut off nicely. Turn around. That's a tough shot. Good defense by Keontae Kennedy. Boom trying to work his way around the trees. Kennedy wide open for oh. three, and UTEP what? has just hit second three on seven attempts. Well, if you're going to be that wide open, you better. Teddy Allen and Rice, they don't need to run plays at all. They are both capable of just taking their man and getting in the paint and taking a high percentage shot. Got a whistle as Rice got a bit too aggressive with Sule Boom. It's a 20 to 16 lead for New Mexico State in the Sun City tonight. Keontae Kennedy with 41.4 miles of space to shoot that three. 644 to go in the first half. New Mexico State a 2016 lead on the road here at UTEP. New Mexico State leads this all-time series 116. 104. They played back on November 13th, about three weeks ago, as they've won 11 of 12 against UTEP. It was a 77 71 win. The issue was in that first half of that game about three weeks ago, where the turnovers, they committed 11 in the first half. And so far in this one, New Mexico State with just three turnovers in the first half against a UTEP team that has forced 20 miscues per game this season. Right by the closeout and good finish by Christian Agnew. Noah Kozlov, Tim Scarborough, our stadium crew with you this evening in El Paso, Texas. Teddy Allen on the closeout now. Nice job by Bienemy. It's going to be a kick ball. So that'll reset to 20. So UTEP has gotten themselves right back into this game. They're starting to score, really. They did it on the offensive end. There was that five and a half minute stretch. 
where they didn't score at all, and it was just an eight-point game, and now they've made five of their last seven. Trailing by two. Three is well short by Rice. Oh. A lot of bodies on the floor, and it was Christian Agnew who came up with it. We play on. Boom v. Allen. The defense. They didn't fall for the Hezzy. There's no double. Verhoeven's Verhoeven. got to go score, yeah. And he went right into McCants, and he was whistled for the charge. He just lowered that shoulder. And Verhoeven is a really good passer, so you understand him wanting to pass out of a double. But if the double doesn't come and he's eight feet from the basket, he's got to go to work, which eventually he recognized. But still, McCants with a solid defensive play to get in front of him. He telegraphed his, his move, though. That's the second on Verhoeven. McNair's got two on the other side for New Mexico State. Whoa. Good pass and a finish. Jabari Rice with two more. Sneaking. Get in that back door. You turn your head, man. These Aggies will make you pay. Rice has four. Allen leads New Mexico State with five. Boom leads all scorers with six. Woo. Boy, can McKinney get up oh. there. Wow. Allen, double team. Rice, the pump fake. He'll pull for three, Jabari Rice. Went two for 11 from three on Tuesday. So it's good to see him get one on two attempts here this evening. Honestly, Soleil Boom played that as well as you could. He was in Rice's face. And a great job by Rice on this end to deny Boom the basketball. In the lane, Bonky Maring. He's got his first two. And UTEP is going to play that two-man game on the weak side. And with the, all the action happening on the, or should I say on the strong side, with all the action happening on the weak side away from the ball. But really, they're just trying to isolate on the block. They've done a pretty good job there. Good defense from Maring. That ball is out of bounds off McCants. Bonky Maring from Cypress, Texas. Went to Blinn Junior College. You want to talk about how big the state of Texas is? Oh, so So, so Blinn, Blinn Junior College in Brenham, Texas, yeah. is 10 and a half hours southeast from here. <laughs> <laughs> Man. That's, that's, how big, that's how big Texas is. And a turnover. Back comes oh. McKinney. Wow. They called a tech on Chris Jans while his team had a 4-1 break. <laughs> Don't see that very often. That is punitive. Wow. So his team's going the other way. So you take a look at Joe Golding, but it was Chris Jans who picked up the technical wow. foul. I've, I don't know if I've seen that. I, I have certainly not. But it'll just remind you just to Stay a little quieter for a little bit longer, at least until the officials get down there. And you know, the reason I say it's punitive is because the timing. He had been chirping that whole possession, but they waited until his team got the ball and had a scoring opportunity. And in the middle of it, away from all the action, they tee him up. It's like the whole building is looking at that end, and then we get a whistle, and we come back here, and the official and the coach are in a battle. His wow. His team had three techs on Tuesday when he wasn't yeah. there, and oh. now he's back in the action. He just wanted to get back with his team, I guess, huh? Man. Both free throws good for Boom. Make it 25-22. So at least they keep possession. Got a whistle on 15 white, that's Alfred Hollins. And I really didn't see, see what Hollins did there, but two officials blew the whistle, so they, he must have done something. State a 25-22 lead, just under four minutes to go here in the first half. Get your phones out again, you use that QR code to, I'm sorry, it's a Twitter poll at Stadium, it's a Twitter 
So you can still use your phone for it. Just now not you a QR code. You it's a fan queue. of the game. So you're voting for fan one, fan two, or fan three. Looks like two UTEP fans in New Mexico State there in the middle. A lot of enthusiasm. Twitter at Stadium. Twitter at Stadium. So vote for your fan of the game, fan one, two, or three. In the most spirited fan base poll, New Mexico State out to an early lead. At the free throw line, Donnie Tillman. First game coming off the bench this season. He had started all seven. Former sixth man of the year at Utah. It's been a year at UNLV and now here at New Mexico State. You can vote for the most spirited fan base. Get out your phone, use the QR code, got a lane violation. Take it to that flow code page and vote for New Mexico State or UTEP and support your school. Appreciate you spending your evening with us here on Stadium. The 221st edition of the Battle of I-10. Jamal be enemy number 24 for UTEP. A big assist guy. He doesn't have any assists today so far. He's got over 300 assists in his career, which again started at Oklahoma and then this past season at UTEP. So really just two years and some change into his career, over 300 assists. This is an extraordinary pass. That was a foul on Tillman, so he'll sit. McCants stays in. Alock re-enters for Chris Jans's team with 20 on the shot clock. Boom. That's a Bucket. tough shot. And Chris Jans went over this and how to defend it a lot in the shoot around. But it's really tough to guard all that action. A great job of drawing up a scoring play by Golden. More good defense from Bonky Marin. You know, both these teams look to score out of, a lot of teams do, out of under, out of bounds underneath, kind of like a soccer team with corner kicks. For the lead. Too strong. An offensive rebound, put back, no. Sibley is there, and UTEP's back in front. For the first time since it was 5-4, it's a one-point lead for the home team. And so far, the energy has been brought by Sibley. Good feed down low. A lock. He's able to finish this time. He was 0 for 2 prior to that with some point Blake opportunities, but this time cashes it in. All that aggressive half-court defense that UTEP is known for. Now Allen will extend the defense against Keontae Kennedy. The enemy into the lane. Yeah, that's the tough. Fall away is short. Allen pulls it down and he'll push. Teddy Allen just with five points on two of three shooting. Averages 18 a game. Booms all over Rice. Nowhere to go. Outstanding defense from zero in White. Still time. Got to put it up. Rice does. No. And a rebound by Marin. And nobody alleviated the pressure for New Mexico State. Rice forced to put up a tough one. The enemy. Ah, arcing off the glass. Boy, is that pretty. So tough because there was a ton of resistance at the rim, but the enemy able to put it home. The largest lead was 10 at 15-5 for New Mexico State. Teddy Allen <laughs> wanted the contact, but begging. instead he'll just get two and the lead. He's begging for it, and his coach can't really Plead his case. He's already got a, uh, one technical foul, Chris Jans, but he is still all over the officials. And he's doing that right in front of us, so we get to hear it all. <laughs> Chance more, the official that teed him up the first time, 
Chris Jans is not shy about expressing himself to him. Three to shoot. Kennedy. And he gets bailed out. Absolutely. He was trying to flip that up with his left hand. No and chance. He didn't have a shot at making it. No chance. But at the other end, Allen thought he was bumped. Bumped there. Bumped again. You know what, though, <laughs> Tim? They could have called the foul on Allen when he went to the basket. It looked like he hooked Kennedy. Up. A little hooking. But I say no harm, no foul either way. So that's Kennedy at the free throw line, transfer from Xavier. There's Teddy Allen, his fifth stop in five years. He is one tough dude, boy. A handful to guard, plays with a lot of energy and skill as well. Back comes McKinney off the miss. Two second shot clock game clock and Chris Jans will talk things over as we're tied at 30. It will bring an interesting wrinkle to this rivalry once these two teams join Conference USA. Conference USA getting your alma mater in Liberty, New Mexico State, Jacksonville State, Sam Houston State to go along with FIU, Louisiana Tech, Middle Tennessee, Western Kentucky, and UTEP. So to bring that extra juice will be nice. It really will be. You're talking about championship caliber team adding it to the mix with the Aggies. Uh, and, and Jacksonville State is a really good team as well. And of course, my Liberty Flames have won the A-Sun all three years they've been in. So there's going to be some competition in this league. More hoops tomorrow on Stadium. St. Mary's travels to Colorado State for a 4 p.m. Eastern tip. Don't forget, that game will have Jeff Goodman and Doug Gottlieb on the call answering your questions at halftime. Stadium, welcome to the game. You know how we always joke about there are a lot of good offensive players on one team? Yeah. You say, well, there's only one basketball. Right. We got, we got, we got Jeff Goodman and Doug, got, and Doug Gottlieb on a call. You can only have one person talking at one yeah, time. Yeah, but at least there's more than one mic. <laughs> as long as there's more than one mic. As long as they each have their own headset. You can only have one person talking at a time. It's going to be a good game, too. Oh, yeah. Five to shoot. McKinney. Finger rolls it in. He has been solid. Three to go. The heave. And an eventful first half, New Mexico State goes into the break, leading 32-30. So UTEP's going to have to do something they haven't done all year. That is come back and win a game that they have trailed at the half. New Mexico State and UTEP in the. There's the Franklin Mountains right there on the floor. Kind of reminds you of the court at FIU with the wow. with the beach, although it's not as obtrusive. No, that, that, so that's two Conference USA floors that are battling for uh, unesthetic. Is that the word I'm looking for? You can see the glory road underneath the UTEP bench as the movie made off that 1966 Texas Western Championship team. They're wearing the Texas Western uniforms tonight. Boom, they had that blocked and picked up and put in by Jamari Sibley. And he's got seven rebounds to go along with seven points. Glory Road is one of my favorite basketball movies. Josh Lucas played Coach Don Haskins, did a really good job. Good basketball in that movie. From back door, and McKinney was fouled going to the basket. It's going to be a foul on Titus Verhoeven. So, so they boom coming out of the locker room didn't convert, but then at the other end, McKinney, who's done a really good job in his first start. The best way to watch Stadium is to download the app by using the QR code on the screen. You can watch live and classic games, daily studio shows. Just use that QR code. It's football season. Going back to Verhoeven in the post, kicks it out to Bienemy, the nephew of Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric Bienemy. What did Chris Berman used to call him? Public Bienemy. He also had another one too. Sleeping with Bienemy. Eric sleeping with Bienemy. Chris Berman used to do those 
nicknames on countdown or on primetime. McCants open for three after he caused the turnover, crashes the boards. McKinney there had it blocked. The defense. Verhoeven got a piece of it. The enemy. Left the short. And Teddy Allen comes up with it. So missed opportunities at both ends. Good pass. Oh, McCants looked like he did travel. Oh, he definitely traveled. That was a heck of a pass. And the foul is going to be on UTEP. They signaled number two, but maybe it's 24 enemy with McCants at the free throw line. You saw Jamal enemy his uncle Eric. There he is on the left with Patrick Mahomes. Won a national championship with University of Colorado. Spent about eight years in the league. Really good coordinator for the Chiefs, too. One of the most innovative, and I know some of his Andy Reid, but the Chiefs have, to me, the most innovative offense in all of football. Well, they got to figure out something, because it seems like the rest of the league's catching up to him. So Eric Bieniemy might not be watching this game, and he's focused on the game plan for week 13. There's Sibley, turns, McCants is all over him. The enemy for three, too strong. He's 0 for three from downtown tonight, two for eight from the floor. That was the cleanest look he's gotten from three. The other ones were under duress. Great job on the switches from UTEP. Oh, and nice. Kennedy gets into the passing lane. He does not save it Down. going out of bounds. He stepped on the sideline right in front of Joe Golding. Darren George, the official, all over that one. And man, it's so loud, you really couldn't hear the whistle. See if we could see if he stepped out. Yep. Oh, his whole foot. Twice. Yeah, really. Kennedy was doing a really good job this morning in shoot around, a very spirited shoot around from UTEP. It's like they they were playing as if they hadn't played in nine days, which they haven't since beating Florida A&M on November 24th. And he was doing a great job getting into the passing lanes and in shoot around today. Mentioned football before with Eric Bieniemy, Conference USA Championship game tonight. UTSA all over Western Kentucky at 28-13 in the third quarter. Wow, how about that? Anytime you're holding Western Kentucky to 13 points of that offense. Top passing offense in the country. Bailey Zappi throwing for about 420 yards per game. Not tonight. At least so far. So sounds like it's enough time, though, huh? Three to shoot. Got to put it up. Around and out. We got an opportunity to push the oh. other way, but didn't see him. And then Teddy Allen ripped it away. Allen. Body, no whistle. <laughs> he wants the call, and Chris Jans can't afford to say much, or he'll get tossed. He's already got one technical. But honestly, Teddy Allen created a lot of the contact that was had underneath the goal there. So, I, in my opinion, a good no call. Both these teams spend a ton of energy on defense, that's for sure. Boom, well short, but he followed his shot, got it back, and laid it in. Playing in just his fourth game this season, and UTEP has needed him. That was a fortuitous bounce for UTEP, and now we're tied. And here we go. Boom! Swatted at the rim. Jabari Rice got up there to knock it away on the dunk attempt. Tell you what, you take nothing for granted when they're two good defensive teams. But off the miss there, Boom was able to clean up a little loose change that he created. Then at the other end, a short two? No! Rice erases it from behind. I thought for sure Sole was, Sule was going to bang that one down. That was a really good effort by Rice to recover. We're tied at 34, and that will be staying with UTEP. This game has the intensity and effort of a really good rivalry, doesn't it? 
Certainly does, and there's Kennedy. I'm just glad he didn't say it feels like March. I've been hearing that a lot so far this college basketball season, and nothing feels like March. No, nothing when, does. Un unless your season is on the line, that if you finish, if you lose at the end of the game and your season is finished, then that's March. Yep. Nothing else. Anything else is just a really good basketball. <laughs> Joe Golding can't. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like his team could use a bucket. I know he's not daydreaming about that upset of Texas in last year's NCAA tournament at Abilene Christian, but I know the folks at Abilene Christian are still thinking about it. Signature win for that school, for sure. Anytime a mid-major gets a win in the postseason, it's a good thing. That was a 14 over a three as well. Five to shoot. Allen had it ripped away. That ball is loose. That's going to be a tough shot and doesn't get any of it. And when you think about it, Coach Golden created this job because Rodney Terry went to Texas, the team that he beat. <laughs> UTEP won for their last seven. We've had seven turnovers already in this second half combined. We're tied at 34. Stadium's got more Conference USA hoops on Saturday, December 11th. Old Dominion hosts VCU at 8 Eastern time. The Monarchs and the Rams, December 11th only on Stadium. Welcome to the game. VCU out of the A-10. The second half has been characterized by turnovers. Teddy Allen, since that UTEP game, in which he finished with 13 points of 5 of 13, is not shot well from three. He only has one three-point field goal attempt in this one. Usually makes three a game. Good Coming idea. Coming back the other way this time. That was a good idea running that Princeton set out of the timeout, but it, it was well defended. The Aggies, both these teams are really well coached. When you think about what Chris Jazz has done at New Mexico State, of course, a former long-term assistant under Greg Marshall at Wichita as well. So back-to-back -back turnovers in Sule Boom puts UTEP up by a bucket. Sule Boom is as advertised. We talked about him on Tuesday night, top five players in Conference USA. Number zero is certainly one of them. Ooh. Third team selection a year ago. Allen. Nice job by Sibley to challenge that. And I think the turnovers happened because the intensity level out of the locker room from both these teams is really picked up. Sibley. Lead. We talked about Sibley earlier just bringing energy. He has really picked up a couple of loose balls around the basket, but this time he goes into a nice spin move. A lot of contact, able to convert. I was actually broadcasting the high school tournament that Oak Hill was playing in, that Sibley was playing in in high school in Springfield, Missouri, the Bass Pro Shops Tournament of Champions. Yeah. When Sibley broke his arm. Oh, wow. Fell, fell, fell to the ground yeah. in the game, broke his arm. He went to Georgetown. Good to see him healthy here at UTEP. A 7-0 run now as they've turned over the Aggies four times in the last five minutes. They've been very disruptive defensively a lot of switching some trapping a lot of scrambling and it's really kind of broken the flow of new mexico state mccants mccants on the reverse that's where they're getting a lot of good looks agree down low to mccants getting him the ball is not as easy as we think it is but once he's gotten it he has delivered Sibley, nice touch. He's got 12. Second leading scorer tonight for UTEP behind Sule Boom's 15. 
The lead is five, the largest for UTEP. Allen into the corner. Rice gets the flyby, needs the three, gets the three. Great find by Allen and a great usage of the shot fake by Rice. Great combo. Sounds like a food thing I just said, didn't it? A Rice combo. <laughs> I'm hungry. Get that part of your lunch special. There goes the enemy. Wow. He hung forever, but he could never cleanly get it up. Great defense at the rim. Well, Peek was the one who is there. Three again while you're up. No. Hooking. And then we've got a foul on the rebound. It's on Teddy Allen. That's his first. Allen on the prior possession, though, penetration breaks down defenses because you have to collapse and then close out the shooters. They did a great job, but the sellout closeout is always going to go for a shot fake. And Rice was able to recognize that. Let the birdies fly by and splash it down from downtown. Jabari Rice, when you look at his name in the, in the program, it'll say Sir Jabari Rice. He likes it written out that way. It just goes by Jabari. His full name is actually Sir Jabari Prince Rice. Sounds like royalty, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, I'd say. Should we bow when we talk to him? <laughs> Into the post. Making a move is Mary. Oh, he had gets it. caught on the baseline, got to put it up. Agnew, and he gets fouled. So that shot was challenged by Mike Peak as Agnew was falling out of bounds, just shooting that three. And Christian Agnew, who's missed the last two games, returned to practice on Monday in COVID protocols. He'll go to the line and shoot three. And Maring was really just too far under the goal to get that shot up but able to find Agnew. And you know, if you're Chris Jans, your team is so aggressive defensively. So you're gonna create some fouls like that. So you can't get too mad at a guy trying to close out. But you don't wanna close out under control. You don't wanna foul a guy taking a last second three against the shot clock. But those things happen when you're an aggressive defensive team. Christian Agnew goes by Saucy. Nothing to do with what he likes to put on that lunch special. On that rice combo? <laughs> All because of the dance moves. They transfer from North Alabama. Led the team in scoring as a sophomore at 13 points per game. Playing about 14 minutes per game with this UTEP team so far. And it is a five-point lead for UTEP, and Joe Golding is raising his arms to get this crowd into it. How about the energy of Joe Golding, right? He is nonstop. Looking to silence the crowd. Great half court defense. Good oh, handoff, oh, oh. though, in the finish. Will McNair there. But the penetration of Rice and the special delivery to the back door. And forcing a turnover. That's the 10th from UTEP. And that's the type of momentum New Mexico State needs as Joe Golden can't believe it. Take three point lead for UTEP at 44 41, 11 24 to go here in the second half. Our fan of the game, there she is on the road. The fan of the game getting 59% of the votes. That was fan number two. And if you can hear that whistle in the arena tonight, good crowd here tonight. You can hear that over the sousaphones playing in the pet band. See four mellophones as well, a lot of trumpets. You, you know your brass section, huh? Yes, sir. Were you in the band? I was. Okay, what'd you play? I did play the mellophone for one year of marching band, my freshman year in high school. I played the French horn in concert band. So I'm with a band nerd. <laughs> That's not nice. 
The largest lead for UTEP was five. Now it's three. Rice to the basket. And he was able to use the respect that he's gained from that corner three to get to the hoop. The usage of the shot fake when you are a shooter, it plays in your favor most times. Kennedy lines up the three, and Kennedy delivers. That's his second three of the evening. He was just four for 26 coming in, McNair, and he is finding a home on the baseline. Great high-low from McCanns to McNair. McNair is lurking back door. Be weary. Oh, that's gold, Teddy. Yes. Yes, it is. So give it two for Boom and McCants. The goaltend. Obviously, the reason it's goaltend is because it hits the backboard first. And once it hits the backboard, great job by Boom. He gets the switch, turns the corner, and once that ball hits the backboard, you cannot touch it, whether it was going in or not. Because I, really, I honestly don't think the shot was going in. We'll never know. We'll never know now. Credit it for two. Aggies have scored on their last three field goal attempts. No more. But an offensive rebound. Rice, the pump fake, the blow by, and he is fouled. Going to the rack, and that's going to be on Boom. And that's his first. So Jabari Rice, the preseason WAC player of the year. Last year, a whack second teamer, and he'll go to the line and shoot two. Yeah, he's silky smooth, isn't he? I mean, he does a lot of things well offensively, puts a lot of pressure on you. And, you know, having him at the point guard, playing him out of position, you know, that, that, that takes away from his effectiveness. So it's nice to see if you're an Aggies fan that they have a point guard in McKinney. Campus Insider is your place for the latest news and information in college football. Cam Smith, Michael Felder, Matt Fortuna, great trio. Give insight on the landscape of college football every Wednesday, 6 Eastern. Stadium, welcome to the game. UTSA at the moment blowing out Western Kentucky in the Conference USA Championship game. Last I looked, it was 42-13. Going back door is Boom, and it is erased by McCants. That is the second time Suley Boom had a sure two, and it's taken away defensively by the Aggies. This time, a great backdoor slip. They tried to run this play out of the locker room, Whoop. and McCants patrolling the paint. Great job. He's a Las Cruces native. His sixth year at New Mexico State. <laughs> He's got 100 wins already, third most active in College basketball, a little floater. McCants had it taken away. Kennedy is Jump. so active. And that will be Aggies basketball. And you know, you said you played in the band. One of the greatest basketball players in history played in the band, too. Vince Carter. Mm -hmm. So if he's a band nerd, then you're a band nerd. But are you a great basketball player as well? You've seen me done. <laughs> I think you shoot me out of the three point. Was it in this gym? I can't remember. No, it was no, in, this um, is my first New, trip to New, Fast, New Mexico. So. I think you uh, you got me in a in a it's game happened, of horse. It's happened so many times to my. <laughs> I, I can't, you can't remember can't the venue. I'll say you're one of the Bins oh, and man. finishes. I'm telling you that has been their best offense. Yeah, they they don't have an answer for him in the paint. The Sibley and others have tried but they're just not strong enough. Sibley for three, it's well short. Up for the rebound, Nate Pryor, the Washington transfer. So the answer is to not let McCants catch the ball in close because it's lights out. I like that lineup with McCants and McNair in there, the yeah, two big guys. Let's see if Kalu is up to the task defensively. McNair v. Kalu and and the W goes to McNair, and we have a two-point lead now for New Mexico State. And again, pretty good defense, I thought, but a better shot. Ooh, the man. enemy, no. He has struggled tonight. It is a 6-0 run now over the past 
99 seconds. But There's the big man going to work. McNair and McCants in the paint. And right there, you're just looking for a double. If it never comes, simple eight-foot jump hook. A lot of guys have that in their repertoire. Relatively easy shot. Can gets a breather. Tyler Verhoeven just took a seat after picking up. No, he's still in the game, but he picked up his fourth foul. Boom. Allen the rebound. That's his six to go along with his 11 points. The Aggies have, have decidedly taken the momentum Look out. back. The enemy had the steal, then lost it off his leg. But he hits that hole like his Uncle Eric did. <laughs> Knocked the ball away. Uncle Eric, though, probably would have held on to it. Right. No Two-point lead for the Aggies. Rice has 14. So just use that QR code on the screen, take it to the Flow Code website, and vote for the player of the game. Coming into tonight, you would have thought Jamal Bienemy would be a candidate, but he has struggled tonight. Two for 11 from the field, 0 for 3 from downtown. He just has one assist and three turnovers in 27 minutes. And I, and I misspoke before. It was for Hooven didn't just pick up his fourth. He just re-entered as he's been out with those four fouls. He's out there, one in white. Rice, nice catch to keep that from flying into the bench. Two to shoot, got to put it up, he does. Jabari Rice, and it's an 8-0 run for the Aggies. And I'll tell you what, it's a luxury to be able to get a high-quality shot late in the possession against a good defensive team. Rice is able to do that time and time again. That's a player of the year type shot. Absolutely. On the road, crowd in your ear. For Hooven, oh. that's his fifth. There it is. And quite honestly, Coach Golding went with him because he's the only guy offering any resistance in the paint. And now, 714 is going to be a buffet on the offensive glass for New Mexico State. So Allen, Allen stood in, so Kalu will come in. Yep. I thought Bonky Marin did a nice job defensively earlier as well. Yeah, but he doesn't give you much of the offensive mm -hmm. end, and so they needed scoring. So Verhoeven fouls out in just 20 minutes of play. Finishes with two points. Allen, a little mid-range pull-up, and the lead is up to six. New Mexico State. Those guys know when it's money time, and they you can tell that they know how, the, how to win, first of all, but they know where their strengths are. They turn the game into their strengths. There's a strength. Alfred Hollins gets two, and he goes to the free throw line. He made a tough one in traffic, and, you know, we're right in front of Chris Jans, the head coach of New Mexico State. He didn't think it was a foul there. Foul on Donnie Tillman. It's Hollis in his first bucket of the evening. Spent three years at Oregon State. McCants is in. Tillman is out. So it's Rice, Allen, McCants, McNair. And Nate Pryor on the floor for the Aggies. Against Kennedy, Biennemi, Hollins, Boom, and Kalu for the home team Miners. Allen's got eight of his 13 in the second half, dumps it down low to McNair. I think, I think the help's got to come at some point. It has to because they are feasting. Yes. It, and... They're taking their time, power dribble under control, and when they are close enough to the basket, they just drop it in. That's 40 points in the paint for the Aggies. Booms three, no good. McCants the rebound. Back comes Rice. He's going to push. And Pryor, number three with the ball, backup point guard, getting some minutes. But you know they're going to come back with McKinney Jr. soon. Great the slip. Great pass. Oh. How about that? The big men together. I'll tell you what, the execution at the offensive end
for New Mexico State is impeccable. Just like you draw it up. That's one of those plays that you're working on in shoot around, Tim, and you're thinking, well, when the defense is there, we might find something different. Nope, just like that. 23. As the enemy connects on the floater. So one game every year since 1923, except for World War II and, and last year at the pandemic. As the crowd back on their feet in a five point game with five minutes to go. The enemy getting that shot. Let's see if that wakes him up offensively. As we mentioned his struggles. McCants is just too strong. <laughs> Goodness. He does what he wants to do in his own time. Kennedy. On the baseline. Back to five. This is a long way from over as UTEP has found a couple of easy buckets the last two possessions. It's been difficult to score, difficult to even get good looks down there of late. There goes Allen to the basket. Allen on the reverse. <laughs> wow, is that pretty? <laughs> and Just he, get back, and now he got teed up. And, and, and you, I can't blame him. But he's wanted that. He's wanted that call all night. I, but, <laughs> but. I can't blame Teddy, that's what I'm saying. See, I can in that moment. I can in that moment. Because it was it was simmering. And that's I know he and he I know he crap. wanted to call. I know he wanted to call, but his team's rolling on offense. You just gotta get back on defense. I, I get I get the passion. I get There's, it. That's an absolute grab going it, to the it, basket. It was. And it's it not was. the first time it's happened. But I, I know what you're saying. And I, and I agree with you. Timing is everything. Momentum is everything. And you don't want to give away free points in a close game. But I'm saying he Absolutely had a gripe there, and it's happened earlier in the game, too, and he didn't get the call. In fact, that's why Chris Jans got the technical the first time, because he was complaining about that. But in my opinion, you have to call those grabs. The guy shouldn't get punished because he's strong enough to still finish that shot. So instead of 63-56 in a seven-point game, give him two free throws. Now simply... Check that. That's the enemy who comes back with the three. And he's hit his last two shots. That's in a his, clutch moment. And his first three of the evening, so it's a two-point game. It's kind of a five-point possession, isn't it? The two free throws from Boom from the Tech. And then that. Allen for three. No. Tip wow. for the rebound. They had it. McCants had both hands on that ball. He just couldn't corral it. A bucket here will blow the roof off. The enemy stops. Oh. Box. The enemy made him look like he was wearing church shoes on that one. So that technical has now led to a 7-0 run for UTEP. This feels like a rivalry game. Under three to go and a turnover. The enemy, boom, blocked oh. by McCants. Again. Denied. How about the intensity level from both the fans and the players and the coaches? Wow. The third block of the night for McCants. It's a 7-0 run for UTEP. We are tied. We're tied at 63 on the heels of a 7-0 UTEP run with 2.51 to go here in El Paso. The best way to watch Stadium is to download the app by using the QR code on the screen. You can watch live and classic games. This one's turning into a classic. Daily studio shows and original programming. Stadium, welcome to the game. You know, it felt like the Aggies were about to close the deal just a minute and a half ago when you think about it. But that technical foul really kind of changed the complexion. And now here we are, tied, and UTEP with the ball with a chance to go ahead. So the technical foul led to the two free throws made by Boom. 
as Bienemy misses. He had made his last three field goal attempts. Led to the two technical free throws, the three-pointer, and then the two. So a 7-0 run after Allen had a sweet reverse to put him up seven. Felt like he should have had an and one, and I'm with him. Bryce got his man in the air, leaves it off for McNair, who's got the soft touch. Their big men are so reliable. Great hands around the bucket and great finishers as well. Corner three for Simply UTEP in front. Interesting that prior number three running the show late. Late game for the Aggies. Defense! 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 Allen off the screen. Guarded by Bienemy. Hooks him. Feeds to McNair again. No answer for the big man. But it starts with that penetration, getting the ball in the paint. The help comes, and then the delivery to the back door. Easy shot again. Boom. Blocked by Rice. What a matchup that is. Boom and Rice yeah. going at it on both ends. And Boom is now six for 20 from the field. He's gotten four of his shots erased at the rim tonight. Hands it off to Sibley. Gets it back in the corner. Well short. And he's taken a couple of shots under duress here down the stretch. Great job by the Aggies defensively. And now timeout. With 61 seconds to go, Chris Jans calls timeout. So for New Mexico State, what are you drawing up? Well, you're up one, so you want to take care of the basketball. You want to make sure you get a great shot. And you want to get it late in the possession. There's only 22 on the shot clock, so you got to be aware of that. You don't have a full shot clock. But right now, the way Pryor is running the offense, he's not shooting, but he's getting them into their sets, and they are executing those sets. So you know they're going to try to find somebody on the block, backdoor, cut, and give it to them, or shoot the jump hook in the paint. They are murdering uh, UTEP in the paint here in the second half. Now you see those points in the paint with 50. That's a... That's a and rack I, a point. And I, and I like what they just ran before, getting getting Allen off the curl and then getting Allen the ball around the free throw line and then letting him decide when, if another defender comes his way to dump it off or if he wants to continue going to the basket. I like that ball in Allen's hands there. And you know, in the era of three-point volume shooting, New Mexico State has taken just nine three-pointers today. They are getting the ball in the paint, as you saw on that graphic, 50 points. They've made three of them. A minute to go, one point game. Here's Pryor running the show. He's getting he's getting them into their sets every time. Down on the far side against Kennedy. He's getting away with a hook there. Hands it off to McNair again. No answer for the big man. If you come for the double and it doesn't come from the top, then that back that that big, big man is gonna go back door every time. They need one here. Sibley has had some answers, and he does again. We're tied at 69. Sibley with 18 now. He has come up big. New Mexico State does have two timeouts. The preseason whack player of the year with the ball in his hands, Rice. Six seconds. Rice, 4-3. <laughs> wow. Jabari Rice, three with 1.6 to go. And wow. UTEP calls timeout. You talk about a guy who has the ability to live up to his potential and what everybody thinks of him. That is Jabari Rice. Big time shot. He wanted that ball all along. He did it on the defensive end with that block of Sule Boom. 
And Jabari Rice is three for five from downtown. He's got a team high 19 points on six of 11 shooting. And of course, none bigger than that one from Sir Jabari Prince Rice. Maybe we should bow to him. Masterful performance tonight. 41.4 miles separate Las Cruces and El Paso in the 221st edition of the Battle of I-10. And it is moments like this where you feel like they should adapt the NBA and move the events of all. It would certainly make it a whole lot more eventful. 1.6, 94 feet is awfully difficult. But you know, we saw them practicing the Christian Leitner play earlier today. The three across, really trying to throw a length of the court, get a high catch, maybe even a tip pass to a, a shooter on the wings. Let's see if they can execute it here with people in the audience, with a TV audience and announcers at courtside. Kennedy to throw it in. And he calls timeout. So they wanted to show one play just to see what how the Aggies would guard it. They played man to man. Some teams will just play kind of a zone and just kind of not give you any passing angles and let you take a 60 foot shot. The Aggies were a little bit more aggressive. So now Coach Golding is going to have to draw up something different than what we just saw. The formation when they come out will be should be a different alignment or at least a different option based on what they just saw defensively. Now in shoot arounds also, they run these practice huddles and they run. Practicing late game is very important. And let's see, this is awfully difficult, but it's not impossible. 1.6 seconds, you can certainly catch, maybe even fake and then shoot. They get it to be enemy, be enemy. Wow. Jamal Bienemy off the back rim, and the sun sets in the Sun City for the home team. New Mexico State, a thriller, thanks to the three-pointer from Jabari Rice, a 72-69 win in the 221st Battle of I-10. It wasn't the best look, but that shot almost went from Jamal Bienemy. But a tough loss at home from UTEP. But that Aggies team is a really good basketball team. Well coached. Talented around the basket. The 50 points in the paint. And then Rice with the nail in the coffin from downtown. New Mexico State just went on some crazy runs. Just simply didn't miss in that second half. We mentioned at times they've gone eight for eight. They've gone seven for seven. They finished four for four. They shoot 68% from the floor in the second half. And Jabari Rice, the player of the game, not just thanks to that three-pointer, but much in part to that. There it is with 1.6 around and out. And the fact that it was went around and in, that allowed them another about half a second. Maybe, exactly right. And I tell you what, not just scoring, but timely buckets. Rice delivered, but it wasn't just him. The interior play from the Aggies, New Mexico State, was exceptional. The passing, getting to the basket, and finishing shots in close. A great job by Chris Jans' team. So Chris Jans improves to 7-1 and one in this series, 5-1. and one on the road here at UTEP in this series as New Mexico State starts off its four game road trip with a victory as they improve to six and two on the season and UTEP falls to four and three.